Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to a very special episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and tonight's episode is something a little different from our usual fare. We won't be watching a movie this week or the next. We've reached the end of our first season of The Fire Pit, and to explain what the next three weeks of content has in store for you, I'm going to send things over to Josh. Thank you, Dan. Josh here. British. Wait a minute. Did you say we're not watching a movie tonight? No, we're not. Oh, I need to put away this popcorn that i already ate you can still eat the popcorn josh we're just not watching a movie you can eat popcorn without watching a movie that's the rumor oh josh here british name reginald and basically what we wanted to do was uh take a little break as we regrouped as a podcast talk amongst the three of us and you know figure out what we liked about season one and what we want to keep and what we want to take out and just figure out how the podcast is going to go and, you know we've gone over all of our episodes we've listened to them over and over again because we are awesome and we love our podcast so we listen to it and we listen to it again and we've asked for some feedback so we got a lot of good feedback but tonight is the first of really two special episodes three if you count the culmination of our first episode of season two in selection section number seven where we will reveal the first destination of season two so stay tuned but to tell us the format of tonight's episode i'm going to hand the mic over to thompson tom well thank you reginald no, no. Okay, so to confirm, we're not watching a movie today. Can I still get belligerently drunk? It is a day of the week that ends in Y. Yeah, I mean, and if Josh can eat popcorn while not watching a movie, you can get drunk while not watching a movie. Actually, isn't it harder for him to get drunk at any other point of the day? He's an alcoholic, you know. Tom has a serious problem. We've been meaning to talk to him about it, but we're busy with the podcast. This episode actually isn't about the episode. It's an intervention. Tom, you, you have a problem. And I plan on dealing with it right after I finish this gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my name is Thompson, American name Tom. And tonight we present to you, our faithful bots and listeners, the first Fire Pit seasonal retrospective. Not a clip show, because I don't want to edit that in. Tonight, we're going to talk about a few topics going over our first season. The origins of how we went from just three guys who wanted to record their thoughts of the movie they just saw to our current journey format, the addition of skits, and our favorite moments from season one. And we look forward to sharing this journey, the origins, if you will, of the one, the only, the longest lasting Fire Pit Podcast to come out of 2020. The best of the Fire Pit Podcasts. I have listened to none of them, but I can still confirm we are the best of them. Awesome. Yes. So, I want to ask, Dan, where did we get the origins of the podcast? How did this come about? Uh, Well, it's funny. Um, It actually kind of evolved organically, and also <laughs> the pandemic certainly helped it um so pandemically wait which one of you is drinking again and which one of you is eating popcorn yes okay uh no it started off um i would go over to josh's house um and we would watch uh, either a star trek show like picard or discovery or something else or a movie like once a week or once every other week and then the pandemic happened and we weren't able to get together and hang out in person anymore. So we started So Josh, I think found was the one that found the, the sink lounge. And he was like, you know, we could, we could watch star Trek or something on this and just, you know, converse over the computer. So we did. And then the next week we were like, you know, well, Tom's not doing anything here. Let's get Tom over here to watch something with us. So we brought Tom on and then like, we it was a, we we watched a couple of movies before we even started recording anything. Yeah, um, it does uh, definitely like our first thing we used with uh, we watched the first thing we watched when um, together was the Picard season finale, um, and then I think it was a few weeks when like what was it April first or something like that? It was uh, like a week or two later 
Um, I got the idea, like I was bored. I wanted to hang out with you guys, but we were being good citizens and not getting out and trying to, you know, maintain quarantine because we just had that shelter in place order and all that other good jazz. So what we ended up doing was I recommended, hey, guys, you need to watch the movie Guyver because we're watching Guyver 2, which was a big fun movie that I loved growing up as a kid. Air quotes, fun movie. But I'm jumping. I'm spoiling some of this. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like a 12 year old me would have thought that movie was awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And 12 year old like, me did. Yeah. I did think that movie was awesome. I remember playing Guyver in the playground at school during recess. That'll date that movie for me. And then we started that. And then what was the next movie we watched, Tom? Well, let's see. We started with Guyver 2. Then you, I mean, you introduced that gem of cinema. And Nigel and I nostalgically had our own gem that we wanted to share with you, Josh. Something that we held fondly in our hearts. One of the greatest 90s slash early 2000s films ever made Josie and the Pussycats which hindsight still holds up I still love that <laughs> film Josh on the other hand I remember you had a few um other contrary thoughts about that movie you, you kind of had to be there to really enjoy that movie yes yeah, apparently you guys were going through a uh time of your life and um the two early 2000s that movie was a good way to take it out on yourselves i don't know and to me I it's just know. the movie's got a nostalgic feel for it because it's like it's an in-between period of like the early 2000s when it's still technically kind of clinton's america and 9-11 hasn't happened yet and then 9-11 happens and that's kind of like the death of the 90s so to speak and like this is now what movies are like now so i don't know just seeing the pussycats was just to me a, a, a snapshot of that just that weird transitional period plus early rosario dawson i mean yeah mwah. oh yeah yeah plus tara oh, reed yeah. before she became well tara reed and uh, yeah. you know uh like the actress tara reed not the meme tara reed and uh <laughs> you know uh, I, yeah and they, they, was, they had a smarter like, story than well, most of it's fair. Air quotes smarter. I liked it. I loved its little, like, take that to co corporate capitalism in movies and product placement. You guys don't have to justify why you like the movie. We're all allowed these guilty pleasures. This is about a, a retrospective on the whole podcast, not you justifying um, doing mental gymnastics to prove that you why you like this movie. It's okay. It's okay. We accept you for what you right. are. And we didn't technically watch that movie for the podcast and we don't need to go back and rehash it. But then after Josie and the Pussycats, I think we watched Showdown in Little Tokyo, was it? Yep, that was a recommendation by Right, you. and then the, while we were watching that gem of a movie, <laughs> that was that was my Guyver too. That was one that 12-year-old Dan thought was the shit, and then, you know, 38-year-old Dan's like, uh, no. And I know I had <laughs> pitched the idea of connecting all of our movies via an actor or right, actress. Right, because then we saw and Tatsu from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies in uh, Showdown in Little Tokyo. So that's when we decided to watch the first Turtles movie. And then it was during, while we were watching the first Turtles movie, we we're like, we should watch number two as well, because we were talking while we were watching that movie about how different number two was from the first Turtles movie. And Because mm -hmm. we actually, when we first started what doing this, because this was what, our third or fourth week of watching weekly movies together, we'd watch about two movies a night. Yeah. So, because we didn't have all the stuff that we have, which we'll get to later. But then Tom said the magical line that where he where basically spread his legs open and birthed this podcast. <laughs> Tom, do you do you wish to say those lines once again? Um, now that you've painted this great picture of this moment, push Tom, push. Why don't we just make this a podcast? And me and Dan was just like, it's a boy. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, you were also very drunk at the time. You still sobered up, and it was still the good idea the next day. So, obviously, I struck gold. Yeah, I looked over, and she wasn't ugly. And I was like, all right, Josh. <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> so then that became, yeah, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 became our first quote-unquote episode. Christ, how long has that been in the oven? Well, it's now on top of the oven. Okay. The, the oven is off and it is out. So who wants to talk about this film? We're sorry for that one, by the way. We're sorry for that one. And then I think uh, from then we went to the rundown. 
Uh, and then from the rundown, we went to Doom, and from Doom, we went to Pathfinder, and from Pathfinder, we went to Starship Troopers. And then, like, I think it was Starship, it was right around the time we were going to do Starship Troopers that I kind of suggested that maybe we plot out the next, like, two or three movies in advance so we can have some time to research them before we watch yeah, them. Yeah, because we were really, like, we would spend the week talking, like, what movie are we going to watch this week, guys? Yeah, and we were sometimes didn't know until, like, Friday night when we all mm-hmm. dialed in together. Like, mm-hmm. I think the one that we were really leaning on for uh, the movie after. The rock movie that we were leaning on wasn't uh, Doom, but we were actually leaning towards Walking Tall. Yeah, because it had the rock in it and yeah, such. So and we were I know I haven't seen it. Yeah, we uh, ended up going with uh, Doom because of Carl Urban. Yeah, and unfortunately led us to episode four. But well, that's because I was like, I think I said I wanted to do Pathfinder and then Clancy Brown to Starship Troopers and then. Um, Michael Ironside to um, Top Gun. Top yeah. Gun. So we we plotted out the next three weeks from Pathfinder, and then while we were watching Top Gun, or while Top Gun was just about to finish, or something to that effect, um, Josh was like, "We have six weeks to Independence well, Day." Well, uh, we, so were, we, watching, need to we figure were watching. Out- yeah, we were watching uh, Starship Troopers. You're right. We had to pick four movies between Top Gun and Independence Day. It would be six movies total. But yeah, Dan's right. Yeah, and it, well, it was while we were watching Top Gun when you were like, "We got six weeks to Independence Day. We need to figure no, out a way was, to get from it Top was Gun Starship to Independence Troopers, Day." Because remember, selection section one was uh, during Top Gun. We have a plan. We, if you listen last week, we wanted to try to make it to uh, watch Independence Day on Independence Day weekend. So we have played kind of a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon game, which you know is kind of the heart of this uh, podcast. So we're trying to connect Top Gun to Independence Day in five steps. Six degrees from Kevin Bacon. Whatever. Oh yeah, because we were presenting our our lists the, for the first time. Okay, my bad. I, you know, it's been a, it's been a weekend, guys. But um, <laughs> so yeah, so Josh was like, we got six weeks from Top Gun to Independence Day. We need to figure out a way to get to Top Gun from Independence Day using our format of linking actors or actresses, and that's what we did. And then that started the road to Independence Day. Welcome to the road to Independence Day. Three challengers. One goal, the greatest summer blockbuster of the 20th century, Independence Day. And Dan got to name that one. Ro- no, I've named Road to Independence Day. We picked yeah, John, um, oh, Tom um, did. Yeah. Yeah. We picked, yeah, we went with my list. How much we know about our own podcast? <laughs> Those early days, um, we were pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Rough. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and, and even that early journey, that early journey, like, I, you know, I, I just... Just to do the get ready for this retrospective, I went back and listened to a couple of early episodes. And even like early, like Top Gun is still kind of weird to listen to and rough to listen to. Um, in fact, I don't even think we started scripting even our intros until was it Inner Space or was it Apollo 13, maybe when we started doing? I archive all of them. The first one we actually have a script for was The Right Stuff. Okay. So mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't have scripts up until The Right Stuff. <laughs> And I think our first air quotes scripted cold open was Independence Day. We had like one or two lines, liner um, cold opens that I guess mm-hmm. we should go back and explain this. Like we have our own internal lingo. Obviously, a cold open is what happens before the credits roll in a show or whatever. Um, so that's what we started calling our um, scripted segments, like our skits, basically, is our cold open. And then uh, we have interspersal segments, which is our interspersal host, which fuck that guy. But uh, yeah, I don't know why. I think he's pretty good. He's got a nice voice. I mean, and so professional. I think he's kind of annoying and I think he kind of steals the show, but a little pretentious, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very pretentious. I don't think he's very humble for what he brings to the the podcast, if you ask me. But not that I know him at all. We might have to revisit this for season we two. We might, we might. But uh, that interspersal segment, we have our interspersal skit and our after credit scene we call the stinger. So if we call it that during this retrospective, um, that's what we mean. So we started scripting the cold opens and we, let's put it like this, we love this podcast because it is a creative outlet for the three of us. And we all go a little prima donna and a little <laughs> diva here and there when we write our cold opens. I'm mostly talking about me. <coughs> oh, oh, no, what? No, no, Josh. No, no one. No, no. not at all. Uh-uh. Not at all. Mm-mm. Well, if you guys wouldn't fuck up my scripts. But um, anywho, so, yeah, we uh, we do enjoy writing the scripts. And we would listen to our own episodes and realize, wow, these these need a little little bit of structure. 
and, and I think it was listening to the other when we were, you know, listen to the episodes before we published them and all that. Like, I think it was me listening to either Top Gun or Inner Space or something like that when I was realizing that, like, at the beginning, we're talking all over each other and we're still trying to, like, who wants to do the intro? Who wants to do the rundown? A lot of, and, uh, um, uh, a lot of dead, a lot of dead air and empty space that I kind of was like, I need to script at least the open stuff. And not scripting like final thoughts, like our final thoughts and stuff are never scripted because that needs to come off the cuff because that's the whole point of the podcast. But there's a genuine reaction to the movies we're watching at, right after we've done watching it. But it's because Josh, we realize we are terrible at improvisation. We could speak about oh God, we're awful at it. day in and day out. You know, we never even got into the whole origins of why we named it the fire pit. You know what? We never did. So yeah, let's take us actually further back in time. Uh, so Josh, where what is the origins of the name of the fire pit? Uh it, it goes literally back in time to about 2000 was it 5? No, no, my son was born. So like 2007 or 2009 I think. And it was a, literally a hole in my backyard where I would invite my friends over and I, we would burn shit. Um and then we'd just sit by the fire until four o'clock in the morning and my wife would come out in the days be like you guys are still up. No, you're done. You're done. It's time for you to come to bed. No, she would, she would actually be a lot more nice about it. She would walk out and then she would be like, so are you guys going to bed anytime soon? And I'm like, why? Sun's not even up. Yeah, I know. It's like, we're, we're still like, dude, we just, we just got to talking about Star Trek five. We got about six more movies to go. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? But the uh, fire pit migrated from a hole in the ground to a set of bricks that were piled up and looked somewhat formed. And then they moved it. Closer to the front of my uh, backyard, I had a really long backyard, and then it was a it was a stacked bricks there, and then Josh decided to go and spend way, way too much money that I never will regret spending on a very very nice, very epically awesome, with free labor from my best friends, help build um, a really nice fire pit that took a week and a half to build because I had to rush and do it because I had planned for a party on Memorial Day weekend. So I made sure everybody was there until like two o'clock in the morning working every night of the week. Free labor is awesome. That was. <laughs> and then and then I remember buying uh, the set. I went out and I bought everything. Like it was one of those deals where I just wanted to go. I'm like, I want this, 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 and this. Here's my checkbook. Put it on my doorstep. I was, and they shipped it. <laughs> and then we were, we had, I had spent the entire week prepping the ground. Anybody who's laid um, stones know it's a pain in the ass. But I prepped the ground. I spent like five days prepping the ground, digging the hole, leveling it, putting down the gravel, putting down the everything that needed to be put down. And we started laying the sand and laying the bricks only for Tom at like 11 o'clock at night to be like, guys, I don't think we have enough bricks. And I'm like, oh, okay, we got enough bricks. We're fine. We're fine. So we kept laying them only to find out that we did not, in fact, have enough bricks. And they stiffed me on my order. <laughs> one of the earliest, but not the last iterations where Tom was right, but no one admitted it until it was too late. We were in denial. But uh, no, after, uh, I think it was the next day, Dan and I went to the brick place. He did, like, we. I thought I was going to have to go buy bricks, but Dan pointed out that they didn't close till noon. It was like 11. Man, I went up there, we chewed their asses out, and they ended up giving us a whole, like, slew of bricks for free. So <laughs> I remember, like, fucking, we put them in the back of that car. We just weighed the whole oh, damn dude. thing down. It was a little it was like drag, dragging the rear end down Main Street <laughs> trying to get back to your house. Jesus, it was like three Christ. loads. It was like a little Mazda five. So it was a dinky ass <laughs> minivan. Oh my god! Oh my god, my god dude, we were we were loading that up, and we did. We actually had to unload some of them in the parking lot because like the, the fucking rear ends in the parking lot, dude. We can't yeah. move this car. Fucking sparks are going to come out of this, flying out of this thing like it's the DeLorean. Yeah, it's scraping <laughs> as it's going over the road. I think we made like two or three trips because that was like so fucking heavy. We ended up building it and we ended up getting the fire pit uh, built and we got to celebrate Memorial Day weekend with the brand new fire pit. And we had many, many nights by that fire. And then when I moved to my current house, I wasn't able to take the fire pit with me and... I miss it so very much, but I fortunately I still have access to that free labor. So hopefully in the next summer or two, <laughs> I will be getting another fire pit. I don't know, man. We got to cut into a damn hill in your old new backyard. Yeah, my, new hill is very, my, my new backyard is very steep, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I will help you pay for the labor of that one. But, uh, but that, is, that is the origin 
that is why the podcast is called the Fire Pit because it started with the three of us sitting around that fire pit talking about movies, pop culture, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, like I said, pop, geeky pop culture stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's why it's called The Fire Pit. That's why we wanted to re- start recording and doing our episodes. Our early episodes are rough. Um, we, and then we started doing the scripted skits. Uh, when did we start doing the quiz? Did we start doing the quiz section, like Second Journey? I gave, I the quiz is interesting. I gave a quiz for Independence Day. Um, remember I gave just the quick quiz. It was like four or five questions, but we didn't take anything off that one. So technically the first quiz was independence day, but then we didn't do anything after that until I believe it was, was it dead calm? Tom wanted to do a segment with the reviews. And then I'm like, Ooh, 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 let me and Dan guess. I went to IMDB and just decided to look at some of their top, their five-star reviews and their one star reviews just to see what um, some of the people have been saying there. So if you don't mind, I'd like to read off at least two from each category do, here. Do this there. Do this uh, this way then. Read us the review and we have to guess the star rating. Oh, well, I think. OK, OK, I'll I'll start it off easy. Um, OK. <laughs> No, oh right! Yeah, no, I, I, I had a. I said like I made it the game for that once. Like it was no, before I, we gave our um, no, thoughts you, on it. It was film. one or ten or something like that. Because I know if I listened to the episode and I was like, "Oh, we'll guess," and you're like, it, "Like one to ten, But I think we all came to an agreement for it. But uh, mm-hmm. we ended up doing it that way. And then the next week you gave another one, and then we just did it for the longest time. One person doing two weeks, the next person doing two weeks, the next person two weeks, until Dan came up with the brilliant idea too. Uh, the winner of the quiz gets to do quiz the next, the following week, just to, so that we quote unquote have something to play for. Because obviously, between the three of us, we're not going to bet money on this quiz section. <laughs> if that was the case, Tom would be broke. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're not going to bet money. We don't have prizes to give out. Like, we're, no one else is doing the quiz but the three of us. So there's no point in giving a prize out for this. So I thought, I thought why don't we just do it so that if the, whoever wins quiz gets to do quiz the next, the following week? And that's why most of the quiz sections have been done by Josh and me, <laughs> because Tom very rarely wins. Although we need to have a journey winner next season, guys. A journey winner. What do you mean by that? Yeah, like so, so, like have somebody uh, administer the test. Like we'll invite a guest host on or a guest on just to administer the test or the first quiz of the journey. And then we'll go from there. And whoever has the most wins, wins. And whoever has the most losses, loses. You see what I did and how, how intricate that is? It was, it was very clever. That was mm, genius, Josh. This is why you're the brains of the operation. I is. Um, are. <laughs> English is hard. But yeah, so that was the evolution of the quiz. That was a lot of fun. It's just little, little additions we've made, modifications, little tweaks along the way that we've done here. Reorganization. There were definitely some lows. <laughs> Such as? Well, yes. um, the most recent low was tom's attempt at the quiz i th- yeah i think also listening to my first attempt at a trivia style quiz during swing vote was wretched and awful and i i'm, I'm deeply deeply sh- if i was klingon i would have killed myself by now because i could not bear the shame of my dishonor and i probably would have had to kill my family too because there's no way i can have three generations of my family live with that kind of shame so Thank God I'm not Klingon. I'm just saying, okay? Because I listened to that the other day, and I'm like, Yeah, it was that bad. bad. But uh, I did have a pretty bad one, too. But not as bad as Dan's <laughs> or Tom's. So mine was the best of the worst. Easy. I am humble. I am the most humble guy you've ever met. I am so humble, it hurts. But yeah, so we've had some ups, and we've had some downs. But in the end, I think I'm really liking where the quiz is at. Right. Yeah, me too. And just the overall flow and everything we've done with this podcast, the, the, the things that did work and the things that didn't work, um, story arcs and such. Yeah, this, well, I think, I don't know if story arcs that they didn't work or they did work. It's just that they're a lot of work. And it, it, it kind of, in my opinion, the story arcs kind of, um, I don't want to say ruin because that's not a right, that's not the right word, but it kind of meshed with the flow of the episodes because now we had to keep to a story theme and it was hard to tie our story theme with the movie theme. And I like when our skits, our opening skits have something to do with the movie we're watching. 
like mm-hmm, race, mm-hmm. race cars for Days of Thunder or the bus for Speed or something like I like that. I, I really like that. And it was kind of hard to keep that flowing with um, a story arc that we have to keep it to a script. Yeah. Yeah. And um, without without making it feel like it was shoehorned in like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was experiment. It was fun to try. I mean, if we ever did approach it again, we'd have to really, you know, figure things out. But we do it by like rundowns, some of the one liners that have come up just organically too. some of the um, catchphrases, if you will. If, <laughs> if Dennis Quaid was in us now, there would be no riots in the streets. No, Dennis no, Quaid needs yeah. to be inside of 2020. We need to put. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Put, yes. <laughs> Make America Quaid again. Like, just. <laughs> I have some personal like zingers and such that we came up with. Um, not just even one liners, just like stuff like that belongs on a t shirt sort of moment. I really like the recent edition that we made during this journey, where while we're doing the rundown of the movie, or shortly after the rundown of the movie, Tom does the the metadata and, and the behind the scenes stuff from the movie. Josh does the movie box office and what was popular at the time and this, that, and the other. And then I do like movie trivia bits, like, or, or random bits of facts, useless information about the movie or something like that. Like, I like that. I think it flows well with it and it keeps to the theme that this is a movie podcast. And of course we're going to talk about yeah, movie see, data. That is definitely something that I feel evolved organically too. Cause it's like, I remember mm-hmm. I added that initially to the script because we'd been doing it, Yeah, but I felt like, you know, let's hard code this into our script. Boom, there it is. And mm-hmm, I thought mm-hmm. that worked out really well and it was already there. It just, you know, I, all I did was type it up and put it in the script, but now it's there. So we just look forward to doing it every week. Yeah. The early episodes, we didn't do it every week. Like it was usually whoever did the rundown. If it was my week to do rundown, I did bits of movie trivia. If it was Tom's week to do the rundown, he did the behind the scenes metadata and what the actors and directors and producers were doing at the time or famous. For. Mm-hmm. And then when it was Josh's turn to do rundown, he's the one that did, hey, this opened up on july 4th 1986 and this is what was going on at the box office like it, I know it, we've got a we lot didn't of do it in every like, episode. yeah people like that that aspect of it so and it should be known that at no point in time through any of our evolution our growing pains did any one of us stop and like look up how to make podcasts we have been kind of just figuring this stuff out all on the job as we've gone, <laughs> figure out maybe we should have professional recording equipment oh, God. and not just laptop microphones. We definitely were like cocky as hell. Like we started this game and fucking skipped the tutorial. I know how to play it. I'm fine. And then we can't even get out of the, the first level. Like, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I need a better? Oh, okay. Okay. So. I need a microphone that doesn't sound like I'm in a tin can. Oh, okay. I was supposed to read that okay. thing. Well, it would probably help if Tom and Josh also got microphones that don't sound like tin cans. Well, okay. I already had Great. a microphone. I just didn't pull it out to like the fourth week we were recording. What do you What do you mean Skype's not re- not reliable for all <laughs> saving our recordings? Maybe we should try something else. You it's know, designed for podcasts. rest in peace. Selection section yes. six. Oh man. Yeah, we've leveled up, and then Tom. I mean, Tom, like of course, had to level up his editing a little bit like you know he went from needing almost a week to uh, edit an episode to now he can get them done in a few days but oh yeah holy although shit. i keep making it harder on myself like like in the beginnings like i had the program it took me like five days to do a half hour episode it still takes me almost three or four days to do an episode but now it's like okay i've got it all down but i want to do something neat and i just clip show make i'm at the point where i'm starting to make the, the own music for these so we're not having to like cobble together and like um oh what's that wrestling trope where they um take popular music but tweak it enough to use it as wrestler intro music it's, jimmy hart again. Uh, yeah the jimmy hart version yeah I, so i don't have to jimmy hart it so we can get around copyright infringement now i'm like i, I think i know enough how to record my own music is it any good yet no but We'll see how it goes. But it's it's masked behind our beautiful, luscious, made for radio voices. Hi. <laughs> Add a voice over to anything, any music will sound good. Yeah. <laughs> for example, Josh, give us give us an example of some uh, good good uh, good voiceover here. His name was Tom. He had a mental disorder, but nobody faulted him for that. <laughs> One time he ran right through the store. 
butt ass naked. People were wondering what was trailing behind him. So needless to say, we've had some obstacles to overcome. Um, it's been a lot of hills and valleys, but honestly, I'm proud of where we are to get today. <laughs> it's our friendship and camaraderie. That's really... It's got to be. It's got to be. So um, I, I do have a question for you guys. And I'm definitely right. not reading from a script that we have for this. But uh, <laughs> I'm curious, like, what are your guys' I don't know, let's just guess five top five cold opens all the ones i made all all of the ones yeah all three of them that would be all of them Tom. you edit them all this is true so who do you want to start with me tom do you want to go first josh what do you yeah, want to go do? for it let's let's uh go through uh what do you think okay. your favorite dan uh ever since we started doing cold opens my favorites have been i loved the cold open for it chapter one the only way to fight an ancient evil. I think it's less of a voiceover and more of a narrator. Seriously? You're doing this right now! Is with more evil. Guys, it's clearly a movie trailer! Oh, come on! That whole, like, Avengers Endgame knockoff thing that we did, and that all started because I think I mentioned in the movie trivia for Stand By Me that technically Stand By Me takes place in the same universe as It. And then I said at the end of it, it would have been awesome if you just hear Richard Dreyfus say, on your left. <laughs> and then we, that whole cold open for It Chapter 1 was that Avengers knockoff. It was just great. And the fact that they're all villains, like, we're like, can we get some heroes, please? Like, I'm getting them, like, Cujo and the dog yeah, from Terry was... and all this. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. the, Cujo, Cujo and the car, from, mm. the car from Christine and, like, Carrie, and we're like... Can we can we get some heroes, please? Dude, and I, I practiced for like a fucking week getting that goddamn movie voiceover for just just right, and I'm still proud as hell of that damn thing too. Yeah, uh, it um, took me forever to find the audio clips to use on that. Oh my god, that was one written for you by Tom. <laughs> yes, because I'm a masochist. You are, but uh, continue, Dan. Uh, I really liked um, Hoosiers. We just did that one a few weeks back. Um, I like that one. I love the uh, the the, the storyline with that one. Of me keep getting hit in the face with the basketball. Kickball! Ah! God damn it! Oh god, that's right. I forgot about that running gag. Oh my yeah, god! I'm getting, hit, I'm, getting hit in the, I'm getting hit in the face with a basketball. We, we we lose the game like something like seventy two to two or something like that. Like the the whole bit was just so funny. Oh my god, yeah. I forgot about that. And that was a Josh one too. Josh, you came oh, up with man. that idea, right? I thought, I thought it was hilarious. And I'll tell you what, Dan, if you never if you can't make work as a professional podcaster, you could totally make work in physical comedy because uh, that's what someone at work said when they listen to that. They're like. You sounded like you were really getting hit in the face of the basketball. I'm like, no, I really wasn't. I was just sitting at my desk pretending, but yeah. He was like, wow, I could feel the pain in your voice. See here, after Hoosiers, uh, the, the the most recent, or the second most recent one, the Armageddon NASA IT skit. Sir, hold down the reset button. Just hold down the... <laughs> Fucking great. That one was so organic because all three of us at some point in our lives have done end user support IT work. And that was so like, that was just us, like just in parody form. Fun fact great. about that one is um, all of those stories that happened, well, not like a hundred percent true have happened in some variation oh, or yeah. shape or form. It's, like I'm not, I don't work for NASA. I've never worked for NASA IT. So yeah, we, I've never blown up the Mir space station or caused a shuttle to crash on an asteroid that I know of. But like, like the whole scenarios of like, oh well, I need to point your stuff to our new server. Oh great, now everything's offline again. Like, call me if you have any issues. Yeah, call me if you have times, any issues. I don't know how many times like I, uh, I said that line, praying to God they called back with it when it was broken, got somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Or I've I've like tried to talk somebody into trying to fix something really easily, and they, they either have me on mute or they're not listening to me, and you're just getting more and more frustrated as you're trying to say, you know, push this button, it'll work, and they're like they're they're not listening to you at all. So oh like, my god, yes, yeah, like we've all had a story like that skit was our IT experience turned up to eleven, but we've all had that story of it's like someone just you know. Can't, oh, I don't have the admin privilege to, mm. privileges to do this. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Right. And then I think my, my the last two, actually, is Cool Hand Luke. 
that whole like the debate or the call or I think, I think we were actually doing a debate when we were doing like something no, like it a, was a uh, town hall because that, yeah, yeah, that was one that was one that i got to write but like josh keeps getting all the really complicated political questions and tom keeps getting all the uh uh questions softball about him, keeps, yeah softball heaps of praise like tom why are you so wonderful and why would you be the best or something like that and then like i'm just getting drawings of dicks <laughs> it's, like, it's just god damn it they're all dicks you're all dicks vote for me <laughs> and then at the end of it i just had that meltdown it's dicks it's all dicks <laughs> It's like I'm going through the whole. He the wanted whole, to like, record hat. that line like 30 times. I don't know what it was, but Dan just wanted to scream dicks into the mic all the time. I moment. did. I, I, yeah, it was. I just couldn't help myself. And then uh, uh, just to cap mine off, uh, the Die Hard 2, the, the whole role playing as John McClane and yeah. just rolling 20s. <laughs> uh, I'm, I like the gasoline on fire. With what? The lighter I used to light the torches from earlier when I tried to warn that plane you crashed. Roll for it. Not 20. I roll to not die. Too late. Boosh. That the movie was so ridiculous. It just felt like a... It, it was. And the, the fact that that whole thing was birthed from me misunderstanding your idea for the skit. You were like something like... I, I can't remember what you said in the chat. You said something like you had an idea about um, people you know not being able to break character and i misinterpreted okay. that as like role, role playing it's like Slow they were, we were role playing before you hurt yourself no so keep an eye out for this idea this guess because we're still going to do this i have it locked away but the idea for that skit originally was three guys role playing us doing our podcast so right. like, i get to play dan tonight and i get to play josh and we'd it'd be meta where we talk shit about ourselves so so keep an ear out for that one because we're probably going to do it eventually but yeah, then oh, Tom definitely. came off totally thinking we're just role playing Die Hard too, and uh, that's how that one came about because we're like, oh, that's a really good idea. <laughs> and it was it was like because after watching the movie, it's like, oh my god, it does feel like some dudes are just playing on on RPG and just rolling twenties on everything because no way in hell could any of this work. Oh, it was such a good script. I had a blast with that one. Yeah. Mm. So what about you, Josh? What are your top five favorite uh, cold opens? Well, I absolutely love your lists, the five that I, you did. But I'd have to say some of my favorites. Um, I love the Swashbuckler cold open with our uh, special guest star, rest in peace, Sean Connery. Uh, let, me, let me try seeing if we can get him back in. <clears throat> now, what the bloody hell is this? Oh, welcome back, sir. Welcome back. So you know, blackmail is illegal in Scotland, right? It's well. not blackmail, sir. It's extortion. Will you please get it right? Oh, God. Mm, yes. rest in peace, Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. I got to pull out. I got to dust off my old Sean Connery accent. For those of you who didn't know, that was not Sean Connery who actually called in. It was me. I know I was very convincing. No, I, I used to actually use that uh, accent when I was closing down my old uh, retail store that I used to work at when I was in high school. So I'd have to close down, like you have to give that closing announcement before retail stores were 24 hours. So they'd always have me come up or they'd put me on the thing and be like, yes, well, uh, it's time to close down the store. So I'm going to need everybody to come upstairs and, uh, <laughs> or come up front and sign or check out the register. So um, we're closing in about 15 minutes. So <laughs> it was hilarious because I always got uh, applause for that, but I was so embarrassed to do it. And here I am doing it now. But uh yeah, I'd have to, I love doing the script. I thought the script was funny. Sean Connery got to be a dick, but uh, I can't use it anymore. Rest in peace, Sean. Um, I'd have to say after that one would be Jaws, Birth, Tombot. Good evening. Ed, well. Fire, spilt, poured, cast, ha, uh, ha. Uh. And that did not work as well as I had hoped. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. God, yes. Jaws was the birth of Tombot. Yes, Tombot's amazing. I forgot about Tombot. Oh, my God. Something Tombot would say. <laughs> Whatever do you mean, Josh? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I loved the running gag we had for a few episodes with Tombot. And, uh, yeah, that just came up to He's like, I want another episode or a cold open that kind of, like, plays off the Bruce, the uh, shark thing. It's like, that doesn't work, so we'll just hide it somehow and came up with the uh, audio format of Tombot. I have to say after Tombot, <laughs> I'd have to go uh, uh, Explorers. So does that mean dick's off the table too? My arse dick is off the table. You know what? Never fucking mind. 
God, God damn, damn it, Dan. I just like that skit because uh, how we're kind of jumping or fumbling all over swear words. Yes. And that story about me uh, in that skit and getting in trouble for saying that sucked is true. It actually happened. Seriously, I don't know what's wrong with saying that sucked. Ser I, I got in trouble for that shit. I'm still bitter about it. and It's been 20 <laughs> years. We know, Josh, every one of your stories starts off with you living a horrible life again. <laughs> You're the opposite of Superman, actually. <laughs> Superman comes to the big city and, and it still has a fondness for Kansas because that's where he grew up. You come to the big city and you're like, fuck Kansas and fuck everybody that's in it. <laughs> yeah, because I came from a small ville in Kansas. Yeah, I, Superman would be ever a bit as bitter as I am. So <laughs> That's how I know he's fictional. <laughs> <laughs> like watching fucking Smallville. There is no goddamn rivers like that in Kansas. You mean you're telling me that there aren't mountains and waterfalls Kansas? and luscious redwood trees? No, no, there's not. I, my whole world but, uh, is now. You're going to tell me that there aren't palm trees in Toledo, Ohio? Having never been to Toledo, uh, no, no, no. That was Criminal Minds, and that was Dayton, Ohio. Like Criminal Minds had an episode that took place in Dayton, and I've never seen anywhere in Dayton's got a palm tree, <laughs> unless it's one of those those tacky neon glowy ones that you see it like the casinos and stuff like no there are no palm trees in date yeah you can tell how much i've watched that show what else were your favorites um another one that i really enjoyed mostly because i was the butt of the joke in this one was scary stories to tell in the dark where we're doing a pitch party i'll start with our first pitch and the phrase was horror house wait um what was that horror house shit and I kept kind of, like you guys come up with these uh, really awesome pitches for these actual scary stories. And then all of mine are porn. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about uh, that one. That was so oh, funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the whole like, wait, uh, Dan, you go first. <laughs> His whole like edits are like it's still porn, but he's just taking out all the obvious porn stuff. It's pretty good. <laughs> Oh my god. I, like, I still like how you you played that line in that one. It's like, oh my god. Porn. <laughs> you wrote porn. <laughs> but uh I'd have to say to top off my list, um, and this is no particular order, but I uh the mummy. I love that one. What are you doing here? Looking for a mummy? Huh? Why? To guest star as a superhero on our podcast? But mummies aren't superheroes. Mm-hmm. They're more of a villain, if anything. Mm-hmm. This plan is dumb. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that was actually a skit written by Dan. That was a Dan and Josh script, where Dan wrote the script, and I came back through and made touch-ups to it. Like, he made the joke, but I'm like... Oh, this would right. Be a bit yeah. yeah. The joke was done in threes. And, uh, but mummies aren't superheroes. And I just thought that would be the, the script itself was great, mm -hmm. but I just like repeated the joke two times and made that the punchline instead. So I was the assist. Dan made the slam dunk, but I thought that was a great skit. It's just like, I love how that skit just played out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that guy would come back for our speed skit, too, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, he did. He was the guy pissing on Josh's shoes or something like that. Which, if you listen to it, it almost sounds like he's holding up the uh, bus, too. Yeah. It's his twin brother. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he's probably still pretty bitter that, you know, mummies aren't superheroes. Yeah. So, Tom, what about you? Well, I'm actually the first one I'm going to combine. It's both IT uh, or it. I don't know why I call it IT. It and Die Hard too. Both of those I'm going to count this first one just because Nigel covered them, and they're both like just such good scripts mm. and such good cold opens. The three of us brainstorming that entire uh, skit. You know, cold open interspersal to Stinger just uh, that was one of the most fun writing sessions I've had. Um, one of our ampersand sessions that I love doing, and I love our ampersand sessions. And I actually, um, 
remembered the Groundhog Day one, which I'm going to get to eventually. But that and it chapter one, I'm just proud of because it took me forever to put that together. Another one of those. It was very well done. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I like to just to puff my own chest on that. So I'm going to combine those in number one. The second one, um, number two for me was Shawshank Redemption. That one where I'm like, you guys are starting off um, this the whole thing without me, and I come back and like, you know, Tom Boss replaced me. He's like, yeah, we know. Thank God I never thought I'd get out of there. Oh Jesus, guys, I know what I'm going to say may sound crazy, but I'm the real Tom. Yeah, we know. Wait, what? Yeah, we've had him on mute since the start of the episode. Adding cocaine to children's cereal would benefit those afflicted with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in schools. Yeah, let's face it, it wasn't much better before the electric chair. I thought that was hysterical. I thought it was a great skit. Um, the number three would have to be Wag the Dog, because that's the one where we all come in. It was the one before we like had we said we were going to do run for office, and this was the one where we're all in the the coffee shop. We're like, you know, sitcom, ha ha ha. It's like this is going to be great, and they say, "Bloop, Josh is terrible." You know what kind of person he is? He's friendly, altruistic, kind, and empathetic, just like you. He is one of you, and a vote for Dan is a vote for you. And just all those negative um, political... Oh, yeah, the attack ads episode. Yes, the attack <laughs> ads episode. We'd all be positive. Like, we couldn't wait to hear the you know each other's ads afterwards. I thought that was just fantastic. Um, True Grit, I love, because that was also the start of us trying to get a superhero into the... Um, this was the... Um, the high, not the high flying summer tour, but the one where we're going into Superman. Now we can't yeah, remember. The hero's Journey. Hero's Journey. I just like that one. It's like we were trying to go to Hero to coming in. That was the one where we came up with Josh being, um, oh, what was your villain's name? Now I can't remember. It was because he had the dividends of devastation. Oh, that was the one where you, uh, yeah, it was the quadratic equation. That was the one where you, uh, we were trying to throw you off of a building. Uh, Nigel, I think I see some flaws in your plan. Nonsense. We need to get a superhero to guest star on the podcast, right? So what's the best way to get their attention? Mortal danger? Mortal danger. Now go, go, Tom! And so Tom was thrown off a building. And um, so that was number four for me. And yeah, number five, um, Groundhog Day. Okay, so what do you have in mind today? Who wants to help me rob a bank? I love making that script with you guys. Josh, that was another one where you kind of came up with the idea and we all just worked with it. And going back to, you know, March to Washington, like Dan getting pissed off. I, it occurred to me that we had a call back to that when it's like, Josh, you're like, your character was telling us, like, you know, convincing us that you were in the Groundhog Day loop. And you told all those secrets that I, I my character was thinking and just gave Dan the folded up paper. He's like, it's a penis. Which yeah. I didn't realize until we were just talking like, oh my God, that's a callback to when he was getting all those uh, dick <laughs> yeah. questions. Well, I'm convinced. Let's rob a bank, guys. What's funny about that is the fact that I said that that was a callback to the Wag the Dog episode. Tom's a little slow on the go, so it's okay. He um, is, he is, or not the Wag the Dog, but the Cool Hand Luke episode. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke. Cool Hand cool Luke, that's one, yeah. That's why I wrote, I put that in there. It's like the dicks. I think Nigel knew. Tom apparently didn't. But honestly, though, some of the best ones, I think, are the ones we've worked on for in, any yeah. of the ampersand sessions, because those have all been, that's just fun just getting around brainstorming and just like i like this idea i see what you're doing with that but let's do it this way may we add this subtract this i just mm. love the process right. for me i love that whole sort of thing yeah, as so, much as i enjoy coming up with the skits and then having listening to you guys write them um it's like i think i prefer coming up with them with you like if i come up with a good idea like mm -hmm. i think out of this uh last journey i only wrote what the bill and ted episode and i love yeah, that but, one. but we still tweaked uh, it a little bit yeah, actually, you guys didn't have very many tweaks to that one. That because normally you guys, uh, 
Like I write the cold opens like in the past and you guys would come in and you would add significant amount of dialogue. We tweak the story. We change this and this and this. That mm-hmm. was the first time like we did our uh, table read. And then you're like, well, I don't really have anything to add. And I'm like, yeah, well, it was really? a good idea. The whole, I mean, and it fit the theme of like our cold opens should have something to do with the movie. So time traveling us is, uh, you know, giving us the script, but then, you know, totally uh, punking us. And for those uh, listeners who don't know, um, that was uh, actually a combo. That, I got that idea from a combination of things, obviously Bill and Ted, but uh, for those Calvin and Hobbes listeners, and shout out to my buddy Tim, who was also a big uh, Calvin and Hobbes reader. I, I kind of took the idea from a Calvin and Hobbes uh, s- series of uh, comics in there where he went back in time or went forward in time to get his homework. So that was, that was that little bit. Let's just, um, let's just go over some of our favorite worst movie moments from our journeys. Um, I'd have to say, uh, that whole thing about the battery and explorers. Okay. So here's the magic of the eighties. Where is that going to plug in? Exactly. <laughs> There's no way that's portable. Like the infinite battery. Like where were they oh plugging God, that damn yeah. computer in? <laughs> Like, oh my God! Yes, yes, yes! Like they they have the computer on a rock in a field. It's like that thing's not even plugged in. And then they just happened to pull out a nine volt battery while they were uh, about to lift off for the first time. It's like, oh, there it is. Oh, there's the battery. Oh, oh fucking okay. shit! That whole thing. You was can run a, an eighties computer off of a nine volt battery. Fuck that! You couldn't run an eighties walkie-talkie off a nine volt battery. These magical computers in the '80s that took less inner or less battery power than advanced iPhones in the 2020s. <laughs> yeah, um, and then oh my god, favorite worst movie moments. Oh my god, the the whole like pacing of Swashbuckler, like the whole realization that we're watching a really bad film. Like it starts off like I have to say, I know we're only like 20 minutes in, but it's not bad right now. It's not. I'm not having those. What have I got myself into? Thoughts. You're not having one of those, what have I got myself into thoughts yet. And then like just every scene, because a lot of the movie kind of feels like it's edited very, very weirdly. Tom going, this is an oddly paced film. And then like 10 minutes after, (laughs) 10 minutes after that, it's me going, (laughs) what what is this film? Oh God, the magic appearing and disappearing accents. It's like they just happened up here and then they disappeared between scenes. It's like, I love listening to that episode because that was actually the introduction to our uh, one-liners in the movie. Like, like Tom started including uh, clips of us listening to the movie. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. After the interspersal segment. That was that was the first episode that introduced that segment. And I've, I love those segments. I think they're hilarious. I'm glad I've leveled up to the point where I could because I know we had talked about maybe we should try that, but I wasn't. I wasn't good enough to do that, but yeah, I leveled up and it was too good a movie. We had too many great zingers watching that film. Like I had to. So it's like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to see what happens. If it's too much work, I'll stop doing it, but I haven't stopped doing it. Oh yeah. Now it's a staple of the podcast. Yeah. I love those segments. I hate that we had to watch Swashbuckler to get to that, but But that was, that was good enough. That episode is still hilarious because the beginning part of it, we are all looking forward to watching it. We're excited, and then we're so let down. <laughs> I saw the the trailer got me hyped. I even said that it's like this trailer's great. And affected a lot I'm of looking- the a lot of the IMDb reviews were kind of like this is kind of an underrated gem. This is kind of an underrated gem. So I'm like maybe we're gonna see an underrated gem. No, no, not at all. It just, I mean, it was terrible. No, just no. Yeah, it was <laughs> no. the worst thing to happen to a pirate since Amber Heard. <laughs> oh, topical humor. <laughs> oh, uh, and I noticed that none of those fun jokes where we made it to our Aquaman episode. Um, let's see here. Uh, other favorite worst movie bits. All of Pathfinder. Pathfinder. All of Pathfinder. Geek will see this. That's fine. Geeks love Vikings. They're good. <laughs> Geeks love Vikings. Yeah. So what's going to happen? 14 years from now, it's going to be on some shitty podcast. <laughs> Whatever. That was one of those that almost made us think, why are we doing this? <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, we made it past Pathfinder. You knew this podcast was going to be a success. Yeah, we're like, yeah. it's not a success, but we stuck with it. 
We begged while we were watching that to be watching a better movie. We talked about every other movie trying to distract ourselves from the pain of that movie. Oh my god, we did like a whole retrospective of the MCU versus the DCEU during Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to do mental gymnastics to justify this movie. It's got good cinematography? No. Carl Urban's in it. Uh, that's about yeah. it. Oh, or in it when uh, we were replaying that one scene where what's his face was hurt. Are you all right? That looks like it hurts. No, I'm cool. It's fine. <laughs> I'm Walk good. it off. Yeah, I'm oh, good. good. I'm good. Uh, hospitals are for pussy. Uh, hospitals are for pussies. And I can tell you one thing. I am not a pussy. <laughs> Just gonna sit here for a few minutes, get my second wind, and I'll be all right. As soon as he walks away, one of the other guys like, "Are you sure you're okay? Get me to a hospital now!" <laughs> <laughs> that delivery cracks me up every time. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, that that was. Uh, I think it had some really good one or movie lighters, you know, one liners, whatever the fuck we call those. Yeah, and also um, during final thoughts, Tom going from meh about dead calm to hating dead calm to being offended by dead calm yeah. like his final this thoughts are just offensive. yeah like his final thoughts just go from like it's not a great movie this was a bad film to like by the end of his like five minutes he's like i can't even say it's methodical it just coasted this film coasted <laughs> god damn it this was a coasting film now I'm pissed off at this film. I'm pissed off at it for being so goddamn mediocre. I'm offended by this film, guys. I had a better time with Aquaman. Holy <laughs> shit. He's like legitimately angry about it. It wasted so much time. I'm still... And we've been doing so well up until that moment. And some of the films have been like, meh. But it's like still like, I could find some joy. I found no joy in that film. I found hate. I hated that film so much to this day. You were seething. I'm still so pissed off. I found a reasons to like Aquaman. I could find nothing of joy in Pathfinder, or excuse me, uh, Dead Calm. Yeah, excuse uh, me, or no, no joy in Pathfinder either. Yeah. Um, really. So, a couple more things I want to talk about um, before we we end tonight's special episode. I do want to wonder. Um, we, we kind of touched on this in the intro, but uh, why Tom losing the quiz is so hilarious. Just because it is. Oh, okay, that's all I needed. I just needed to know that. Why is Tom losing the quiz so hilarious? Because it happens so frequently. And you think that he's going to get a leg up, but then he doesn't. I mean, it's, it's, it's mean you could you could throw me a bone here uh, and there. I mean, all right, guys. So let's let's go just a quick list here. What um what are our favorite best movies? Well, obviously, I think pretty much all of the uh, Journey movies so far. Yeah, because we, we've films. this season we've picked blockbusters or really popular films for journeys mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. okay but what not okay let me ask us what non journey movie would you say was your favorite non-destination film i should say um well for me honestly it was life aquatic just because not just for me because i know the film i love the film but getting you guys to watch the film and, and you guys enjoying it too like josh you picking up on things like look oh my god the pirates are coming up behind him and all the other things it's like and you nigel especially you were skeptical as hell going into the film but even you found reasons to like it. you're like this is pretty good actually I expected both of you to kind of be like, yeah, it's Wes Anderson. Oh, boy. But you didn't. So for me, just because you guys both enjoyed a film I love so much, that was yeah. That great. was like, I think the whole list outside, because I didn't know anything about Dead Calm or Swashbuckler, but that whole um, Sink or Swim Summer Tour, like I remember thinking to myself, like, there's a lot of good movies on this, but I'm really not excited to see Life Aquatic. But if I can get through Life Aquatic, I can eventually reward myself with Hunt for Red October. <laughs> Um, but I ended up really liking Life Aquatic. In fact, yeah, I, a movie that I thought I was going to really hate, I ended up loving. I ended up loving that yeah. movie. Tom's favorite non-Journey movie was Life Aquatic. What about you, Josh? What was your not favorite non-Destination film? Um, you know, honestly, I think I'm going to go, I'm, I'm looking through our list here. I'm going to go with a mo like one of the, my favorite movie I hadn't seen. Um, I'm going to have to go with probably oh, Midnight Special. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah like, that was a surprisingly good one. Yeah, like I, uh, I'd have to say out of other movies, like, it's either a toss up between. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one, but it would be between that and Cool Hand Luke. But I think I like Midnight Special. I just thought that, uh, and plus Dan saying, you know, 
he did this for Krypton was <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was hilarious the 500th time he said that in that episode. I did say but, it about uh, 500 times. Tom edited out about 250 of them. Yeah. Yeah. But no, yeah. I'd have to say my non or non-destination film, my favorite and one that I hadn't seen, would have to be uh, Midnight Special. That's yeah. a good one. Oh, well, that was a very good one. Uh, yeah. Uh, my favorite non movie list uh or non-destination film i'd have to say the shawshank redemption because that's a classic film and i had never seen it and i'm always skeptical yeah. if, if, if it's been a long time between classic films that i've never seen i'm always afraid is it going to live up to the hype that everyone says it has like because i don't know anyone that doesn't like shawshank redemption it's just one of those movies that very few people hate it's like schindler's list if you know you meet somebody who doesn't like schindler's list like you have the problem sir <laughs> so i was kind of skeptical not skeptical but i was a little apprehensive to go into shawshank because i'm like i'm afraid i'm just not gonna like this movie and i loved it like i remember it during re the recording of that you guys were mentioning dan's awfully quiet in this film and yeah because i was so engrossed in it i just couldn't take my eyes off of it so mm -hmm. that would be my favorite non-destination film that we covered um okay here's a, here's another one um real quick What's your favorite worst movie we watched? Like a movie that was, that was a bad film, but we still had fun watching it. Oh, that's a hard one. Now, wait, what do you mean by best worst? Like, okay, a good a good example would be Aquaman. We all recognize that Aquaman wasn't a good movie, but we all had fun watching that movie. See, I, I kind of interpret that as like it's a bad film, but it was a good. It was a fun watch. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Like our best. A good episode. A bad film. Good episode yeah. type thing. Like uh, another great example would be for me, The Mummy. That the mummy was a bad, bad movie. Oh my god! But that was a that fun was a episode. fun episode to record. That was a mm, lot of fun yeah. to record. Ooh, this is a hard one for me because Aquaman. I'd have to kind of go with Aquaman a little bit, just. But then again, I wouldn't even say it's the best worst. It was one that surprised me with actually how it tried to be entertaining. It it was a shitty film. It was lousy, but you know, it tried. It was trying so hard. And just the fact that you both were and you liked the film and just were excited to have me like not hate say like, he likes it. Hey Mikey. Yeah, well actually I was expecting you to hate all over it. Oh yeah. Like me too. I yeah, I was actually pleasantly surprised at your final thoughts on Aquaman while they weren't glowing, you weren't exactly trashing the shit out of it either. Like you were this is a C minus, maybe a D plus. I'm feeling generous tonight. I'll give it a C minus. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I was expecting F, F, all of it, F, <laughs> failing oh, yeah. the student forever. Like I was expecting like, because the first thing he said when he uh, gave his ex his final thoughts was it sucked. And I was just like, okay, here it comes. And then he went on to say he didn't totally hate it. And I was just mm -hmm. like, I'm glad this is on uh, tape. <laughs> yeah right. it's, it's for the record but i'll say if we're going best of the worst i'm gonna have to go all the way back to teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 our first one it's it's such a bad film but that was so much fun watching with you guys mm -hmm. it was okay last so speaking of movies that were fun to watch together yeah, what movies would josh you... yeah fuck you josh we don't yeah. care about your opinion okay well actually well i don't I but i'll be nice tell. no josh what was your favorite worst movie oh, now you come back to me um <laughs> Tom, edit Here, that. Edit, edit this one. Dan, you're a <laughs> Give me my money. <laughs> Honestly, I would have to say the worst movie best to watch for me would be Swashbuckler. I loved the day and night difference of our expectations versus our final thoughts. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I like that too. Yeah, because seriously, I... I I, I re -listen, I listen to a few of our episodes leading up to this one, and we are all so optimistic and happy-go-lucky um, leading into this movie, the first half. And then it's like, Tom, I got to give you props for your editing on that one. It's like the way you edited the uh, filming, like the our lines while the movie was playing, just it was like a descent into madness. <laughs> well, the thing about that was, Josh, it was a descent into madness. It was, it was. And you edited it so wonderfully. And to where our final thoughts was just like, what, to quote Dan, what is this movie? Oh my God. I asked, I started asking that question about 20 minutes in. I'm like, what is this movie? What is it doing? What is the point? But, uh, and we yeah. had no answers for there were none to have. Oh. Yeah. But uh, like, yeah, that was, that was a bad movie, but it was a fun episode and it was a good episode. Too. Yeah. I know headcanon that Robert Shaw's character in, Jaws is a descendant of the pirate in Swashbuckler, and him getting eaten by the shark was his 
uh, ancestral yeah, penance yeah, that, for being in that uh, adventure. Like, just that's just how I had came in it. I, so, I, I see that. Yeah, yes, I can see that too. But I got a question for you guys. What uh, do you think would, was, was the most fun to watch together? What movie was the most fun to watch together? Ooh, that is a good question. Nigel, right. let's start with you. Oh God, Days of Thunder. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Yes, yes same, here, same here. Same <laughs> here. I was having <laughs> such a bad day that yeah, right. day. And I think. Days of Thunder came at just the perfect time because we had just had a long journey and a half of just good movies, but really, really deep, heavy films that were good. Like, I'm not saying none of these, none of them were bad, although The Shootist was bad. But and True <laughs> like Grant. deep, and, and you didn't like True Grant, and, and, and I liked it, but it was just like not something I really needed to watch at that point. Like, it's just because we had just so many heavy, heavy films all the way from like starting from Wag the Dog, all the way to um, Top Gun. Uh, yeah, well, the Whistle Stop campaign trail to uh, Washington. Yeah, yeah, but then we started. We went from Whistle Stop to Superman or to the Hero's Journey, and we had some really deep, long, boring movies to start that one, like The Shootist and and uh, uh, True Grit. Uh, True Grit. Oh my God! So we had like a whole like I think s- almost seven weeks. Of just some really deep, heavy movies that were just, oh, soul-sucking. Good movies, but soul-sucking. And then we go to to Days of Thunder, and it's like, Woo-hoo! there's no point to this film but just to watch Tom Cruise be Tom Cruise again. And <laughs> watch race cars, and Randy Quaid be hilarious, and Nicole Kidman is hot. And it's just like, all of this is great. This is so much fun. This is not how NASCAR works, but we don't care. It's fun. Oh, yeah. That movie came at just the right time. I think it was funny that that's the same. We all went with that movie because that was what I was going to say. I mean, other than that, like we had some other movies that were a lot of fun to watch together. I'd say Bill and Ted was a lot of fun to watch together. Um, Die Hard 2, as stupid as that movie is, that was fun to watch together. We had a lot of jokes about that. Um, Top Gun was fun to watch together because it's a fun movie. And also that was the start of our journey. I liked watching Apollo 13 Um, with you guys. Because that's one of my absolute Oh, yeah, that was a good film. one. And, um, 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 oh, shoot, the astronaut film. Uh, right, the right stuff? The right, the right stuff. stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I kept thinking of Apollo 13. It's like, no, it was the one between. Although, speaking of astronaut films, uh, watching Armageddon was a lot yeah. of fun, too. Like, that was a fun movie to watch. Like, yes. So, yeah, those are those were, those were some fun movies. And um, just to round out topics for this episode, are there any movies that made you question why we were doing this podcast? Together now. Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Yes, <laughs> undeniably. Although if we're going to go with Journeys, as glad as I was, we did it. And because, you know, I really wanted to see the movie and do all that journey with you. The Whistle Stop campaign trail to Washington. Yeah, that was heavy to go oh. through. And it didn't help that it was happening at a very particular point in American history that we just wanted over and done with. Right. We had an entire journey and story arc and destination that all dealt with the election. Right. And it was the election that refused to it die. It was like one of those. It was like, I remember like I had a couple of friends were asking me like, why aren't you guys doing Halloween stuff? Like everyone does Halloween stuff in late October, early November. And I'm like, oh, cause it's an election year and elections only come once every four years. Yeah. Screw that. We're doing Halloween shit next year. Like, yeah. oh my well, God. <laughs> Well, technically, you did the Halloween stuff, uh, the journey before. I know. That's also why we justified it, because we did, like, the field trip to Kingtown had some spooky mm-hmm. movies in it. But I'm just like, Ugh, yeah, we should have done Halloween stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. good movies, but, man, every one of them, like, starting from Wag the Dog was just, ugh. Yeah, no, no. And again, I've always wanted to watch Wag the Dog with other people just because I remember, like, watching this going, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed in politics but we were dealing with politics at the same time. And then there was, um, oh, oh, um, oh, another movie that made us question why we were doing this. Um, same journey, um, Swing Vote. Mm. Watching that film, like we all saw there was good in that film. It was just surrounded by a bad film. It, that be, being in the election season just made it so much worse. Yes. Yeah. And I think for me, The Shootist, like, I love John Wayne films, but after coming off the Whistle Stop campaign trail and just deep movie after deep movie, and then to start the journey off with this 
boring, claustrophobic John Wayne film that's just John Wayne's the only one that has even a remotely decent performance in it, in my opinion. Ron Howard is annoying. Uh, Lauren Bacall is pointless at least the romance between the two characters was pointless like this movie's like oh my god i remember like getting 10 minutes in going this movie's got to be almost over right like no it's not it's like no although my mom says we don't get it dan we just don't get it coming from your mom that makes sense only because she's your mom like i never met her but tom says that to shit to us all the time and like i said i just couldn't mm. Well, I think that whole journey right there was for Josh. She's like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? No, because it wasn't too bad for three Westerns. (laughs) And one of them we were looking forward to because it was true grit. It was supposed to be the good. Yeah, what's funny is like during that that journey, I watched four Westerns because I voluntarily watched the true grit remake. Granted, that was good. But then I had to watch those other three. They were not. (laughs) Poor Josh. I thought you could be like, done, I quit. <laughs> Find a replacement. Get that Josh bot going, because I'm done. But the fact that we made it through all of those right there, that was, that's how we know we're going to keep doing this forever. So for the, the next journey, where it's going to be all black and white silent westerns, right, Dan? That's what we decided on. For the next and week. that does it for tonight's <laughs> show. So as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify iTunes, Amazon, <laughs> or wherever you get your podcasts. So be sure to like and subscribe because liking and subscribing helps promote the podcast. And uh, we've actually got seven ratings on iTunes now. So we are a seven rated five star podcast. So thank you. Thank you so very much. And we do appreciate those uh, reviews. And be sure to join us on Discord and have some fun interacting with us, talking amongst some of our other fledgling fans. You can suggest movie paths for us, give feedback, uh, this and the other. You can also, if you're so inclined, like us on Facebook and or follow us on Twitter. The links to those found in the episode's descriptions. Well, if you want to reach out to us old school, you can also email us uh, at, uh, what is the email? It's in the interspersal, damn it. Curtain Call yeah. Entertainment, <laughs> LLC, or INC. Yeah, you can also Curtain email. Call, yeah, you can. Capital C, I- capital C. Capital I. No, 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 no. You're amateurs. Not amateurs. Right. If you want to reach out to us old school, you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Feedback, submissions, uh, links to the email, all social media, and the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. So, Dan, do you have anyone to shout out to this uh, episode? Well, obviously, uh, Peggy, old school, friend of the channel, been with us since the beginning. Um, she's looking forward to season two can't wait uh and uh also uh any work friends colleagues that are listening to this uh thank you very much yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and say shout out to my friends and colleagues and whatever who listen to this episode uh we do appreciate that you know shout, even though we didn't use it tonight shout out to sync lounge and plex for hosting and allowing us to watch these movies together too and from my side i want to thank dan and josh for being Ooh, there and, and that's going to be my shout out i'm shouting out to dan and josh the those other guys that helped me out on this podcast you know much thanks to them finally bringing me into the watching sessions uh, i wasn't brought up in the beginning but it was one time and you were busy that night and i will forever hold it against you to my grave but thank you sync lounge and everyone else um early days skype uh, not skype it was um what were we using in the early days? We didn't record uh, in the early days. We were using Discord to just chat while we were watching the movies together. But yeah, Discord, um, all of those in the beginning, and now of course Zencaster. Thank you for making this possible. Even though there's like several hours between us, we're able to keep doing this together. And honestly, wouldn't be possible without any of that. So special thanks to all those programs and to some of our facebook followers lily josh and don uh, as well as amanda who recently joined and all the other fire pit facebookers thank you for keeping the fire pits burning and for all future listeners who spread the word just we appreciate it real quick i'll go back one just quick shout out to not just peggy but another old school friend of the channel rob yeah rob Tarek thorne and danielle the first three people to join our discord and we can't forget them. They've been with us since pretty much the beginning. And every week they discuss the movies with us, interact with us. So, yeah, can't forget those guys. So Mm-mm. thank you very much for listening. 
Yes. yes, yes. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much for your feedback. And until then, I've been Dan. I've been Josh. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there.